Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. And what I'm going to show you now is this little slow stitch project that I did. I've got this kit is in my Etsy shop, uh, myhallcloset.etsy.com. Anyway, and everything is in there except for that blue and white checkered piece of fabric. I did this before I put the kits together. Anyway, so these are the pieces that I'm going to use. I've got a piece of vintage tablecloth and then some other little pieces that uh, that I'm going to use and I have put a piece now my pages are all the same size and I put a piece of iron-on medium weight pellon on the back of the tablecloth to stabilize it for my stitching don't get it too heavy now and I'm going to make some yo-yos now, these little yo-yos are on the back of my little needle case that I've made I've got a teachable class that I'm going to uh, post and let you know about that and how to make how to make your own needle case out of some vintage laces and stuff but anyway and some of my pearl buttons I love my pearl buttons my mother of pearl buttons anyway so this is what we're going to use to get started and um, just some various red white and blue you know just because so the first thing I did once I got my layout kind of where I wanted it, I took a picture with my phone so that I could remember uh, you know kind of what it was that I liked or how I'm, how I might want to do that but my first step is going to be to make some yo-yos. I'm going to go ahead and get those done. And I'm just going to do a little running stitch. I've got a regular sewing needle, not an embroidery needle. You can use whichever kind you want to, but I'm using a regular sewing needle and just regular sewing thread and do a running stitch all the way. I'm just turning down just the tiniest little bit of an edge around the edge of that circle. And just make sure you don't pull a little knot into your thread because if you do then you won't be able to gather up uh, this little yo-yo edge to make it a little circle. So yo-yos were used in quilt making back in the day and uh, they're just a little fun embellishment so I'm going to stitch all the way around that edge now that I've got it all all the way done I'm going to draw it up I've got that speeded up fiddle it around adjust the gathers yeah, get it all taken care of there and then I'm going to tie it off and then go ahead and make my other uh, yo-yos before I start embellishing everything. Now I'm ready to get started with my block. So uh, I'm going to take move all of this stuff out of the way and turn it over and uh, cut cut around that interfacing that I've already pressed on there. I just that's the size of the block that you'll get in the kit if you get the kit. Now the kit doesn't have any of the patterns, it only has uh, the fabrics in it. And it, you are on your own, this is just for inspiration. So I'm going to cut all the way around the edges of that. And Now I'm ready to work it on, on the positioning of this little piece of dresser scarf. Now the kit might have a corner or it might have an edge, but that's okay, it's going to have that blue crochet trim. Went to Hobby Lobby the other day, got some of this natural embroidery floss and some pearl cotton. And the pearl cotton is a lot lighter weight than the embroidery floss, so I'm going to use it to stitch down. Uh, I'm just going to use running stitches to stitch down the uh, little piece of dresser scarf that I've got laid there. I think the embroidery floss is going to be too heavy, so I want to just try something new, something different. So I'm going to use this little pearl cotton. So I've got to find me a needle that will work for that. So I'm going to get my little needle case. I've got this. Uh, I've done a teachable class on this, and I will be launching it pretty soon. I'll put the description box whenever I get it ready. Let me show you how to tie a knot. This is a cheater way. So take your thread, and you run it the opposite way of your needle. There's the point of the needle. The thread points to the opposite direction. Do three wraps, and then hold on to those wraps on the needle and pull your needle through those three wraps. This is a really easy way to make a good knot. I've been making knots for years and years where I just roll it on my finger and twist it off and that may be the way that you do it too. It doesn't matter as long as you've got a knot that's not going to pull through your work. That can get kind of frustrating sometimes like ah! So I'm going to on this part I'm just going to do little running stitches. In and out and if you if you want to put more than one stitch at a time on your needle you can sure do that I got this started 
then stopped my video and went over and sat and watched TV and mindlessly, I guess that's the reason it's called slow stitching, just did little running stitches out to the end, then around the side, down across the bottom, up the other side, and then scooted down just a little space and did it again and again and again and again. And I'll show you that in just a second. So here it is. Just lots of little running stitches, not any particular pattern or anything like that. Just, yep, just running stitches. So now I'm going to position this little piece of blue uh, and white fabric and find out where I want to do it. But I'm going to do uh, a blanket stitch. I do know that. And I'm going to use embroidery floss, but I'm only going to use three strands. So here I am separating the strands in half. And then I didn't show you how to start this off, but if you will go over to, I'm going to put the the little card at the top and you can go over and watch my stitching 101 video and I teach you how to do the blanket stitch. I think it's also if it's really close together it's also called a buttonhole stitch but for right now we're going to call this a blanket stitch. And so I did that blanket stitch all the way around and I know some of it's going to be covered up with some of the other pieces of fabric that are going to be stitched on top of this but that's okay. And I did not turn under my edges. This is not going to get anywhere. It's going to go into a little book. So it, it doesn't have to be turned under. So it lays nice and flat. So there it is. Now I'm trying to figure out what else I'm going to do with this. I'm, I like that piece of lace up there and that little blue check and that little piece of uh, embroidery fabric. I think I cut it off of a blouse or something like that. I salvaged quite a few things. Now at the end, I decided not to use that piece of uh, tablecloth, red and white tablecloth, but it's in, it'll be in the kit. It is in the kit and I may use it on something else. So to attach the lace, I'm just going to use a little running stitch. And so what I'm doing is dipping into the lower fabric and then just getting a little edge of that piece of eyelet, just catching the bare, barely little bit of the edge of that eyelet lace. And I'll work that all the way, the, the length of that, and then I'm also going to do that across the top and down the sides so it's going to be secure. I don't think I show you how to do that, but you get the idea on this. All right, now with the blue, I went ahead and did a little turn under on that, and so I did a, a row of straight stitch uh, so it makes kind of a little seam, and then but at the bottom, I just turned it under and didn't do the stitch up the side. And I'm going to then do a feather stitch as my embellishment. But first, I'm going to secure that bottom with a little running stitch. I kind of got ahead of myself right there. So stitch that down. And it doesn't, again, it, it's kind of like the fabric that has the, the blanket stitch. Uh, you don't have to really turn down the edge. But I just wanted to, you know. I'm just stitching and just stitching. So there we go. So and I'm going to do a feather stitch to, to join, to, to do the, like the little embellishment between the eyelet lace and that. And that's also in my stitching 102. So you want to be able to go over there and check that out if you're not sure how to do a feather stitch. So I'm going to start in the middle, pull my thread up in the middle. I'm going to scoot over, I'll show you how to do three or four of them. Scoot over just a little bit on the same line, basically parallel as that first stitch and then angle down a little bit and come right back up in the center but where the two pieces of fabric meet. Now then, where that stitch is that I just took, I'm going to scoot to the opposite side, go over about the same distance, and then angle down and go back into that middle section, wrap that uh, piece of thread under my needle, And then pull that up and from that point where that thread is coming out I'm going to scoot over maybe about a little more than an eighth of an inch angle that needle down again and that thread is underneath my needle even though you didn't see me wrap it and then one more time from that point of where that thread just came out scooch over and then angle down Bring your needle up where the two pieces of fabric meet. This is used a lot in crazy quilts, Victorian crazy quilts. So this is called the feather stitch. 
Okay, I've got that all in place. And now what I want to put next, I'm going to put this little piece of, uh, and I didn't go all the way up because this is going to, to be caught, that little piece of that blue and white is going to be caught with this little piece of white, uh, I don't know what kind of fabric that is. Anyway, and I decided to scooch it up. I was going to leave it, bring it down, but I wanted that little angle of that blanket stitch to show at the top of that blue and white uh, swirly design. And I've got a piece of uh, little uh, ball fringe, little red ball fringe, and I'm just whipping that down with a little running stitch, stitching it down with a little running stitch, make sure I'm catching my fabric in there. Now I could stitch the fabric first, but I didn't. I just got them at the same time. And then there is a right and wrong to the, to the ball fringe, and it's also in the kit. Just a little piece, not a whole long piece, but just a little piece. It's longer than that. But. All right, now, so what am I going to do next? I like that. I like that the fact that, that uh, shows. So now I've got this cute little bonkers about buttons. This came, I bought this on Etsy from Simple Life Stitches. She's got a cute shop with all kinds of little printed little labels, stuff about buttons, stuff about stitching. And so I bought two different little kits. Uh, so I wanted to be sure and share that with you because I love her little stuff. So this little book is for my pearl buttons. It's not really just about the slow stitching, but I wanted a home for my pearl buttons. So now I'm putting on my yo-yos. I've already put one, the blue yo-yo, at the corner, at the lower corner of the bonkers about buttons. And, now, and I've already stitched on the red and white dotted yo-yo uh, and added the button. And so now I'm putting on this red and white check and I've overlapped it just a little bit. Just makes it more interesting when there's a little bit of overlap. And being an artist, I still kind of think in rule of thirds. So just because I'm doing it with fabric instead of paint, you know, try to keep it interesting, make sure that the shapes, you know, crisscross or whatever. Lots of stuff to keep it interesting. So I've got that tied down and now I'm gonna, and since there, again, there's no pressure on this, so I'm gonna come back up. I'm not tying a knot at the bottom or at the back, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my button and I'll use two stitches through the button to secure it in place. Now, one of the things I was just showing, which I didn't tell, is that the I've got one of my buttons is kind of a little bit older and so it's a little bit more ivory looking and I put that on top of the uh, red and white check, red and white dot because it's also a little bit ivory looking, just a little bit older piece of fabric. And this one's a brighter button, so I put it on the brighter piece of fabric. Now I've done that two through two times. I'm going to tie that off on the back. And, and then uh, I'm going to stitch this little bow down. So make sure the tails will stay where I want them to stay and the bow will stay where I want it to stay. And then I'm going to attach, I've got a, a, a mother of pearl button that has a little bit of a blue cast to it. So that's what I wanted to do there. I was going to put another shank button on there, but then I decided to put this little two hole button uh, on top of this. And, and because it's just a little, got that little touch of blue, I really, really like that. But anyway, stitching that little bow down so it'll, its little tails will stay where I want them to. there and stitch down that middle before I attach the button. All right, here's this little, see how blue it is? The back of it is really dark. The front of it has a, see how dark that back is? But that front of it has a, that blue cast. So these are from uh, abalone shells. I think that's what they call it, mollusk or some kind of mussel or clam or something. Anyway, I don't think they're oyster shells. They could be, but mother of pearl, not plastic. And they're cold. You can tell, usually tell a mother of pearl button because it ha has a different feel to it than, than a plastic button. So stitch that down, doing two stitches on that too. Tie 
tie that off and I think I'm liking the way that this is looking we are almost done oh yeah I want it needed another little touch of something so French knots I'm gonna put there's little uh, raised embroidery places in this eyelet and I thought that'll just be perfect for the little French knots and so I'm just using I'm using uh, I don't know whether I was using three yeah I'm using three strands of the floss and then just three wraps around my needle and going into each one of those little raised areas to to make those little French knots the French knots are in stitching 101 if you need a refresher on how to do those and I almost didn't have enough thread to get all the way around but I didn't want to put a unwrap a whole new little thing of thread to to do this so I'm just like okay you can do this you can do this and then get it tied off on the back making sure I have enough to get it tied off on the back Ta -da! got it got it anyway I want to thank y'all so much for watching for hanging out for staying around for liking subscribing for sharing me with your friends I just think that these are so much fun they're kind of relaxing and kind of uh, like well you got to think about it a little bit but once you get to the stitching part that's pretty relaxing anyway there it is all finished up bonkers for buttons it'll be a new page in my little uh, journal and uh, give me a thumbs up and I will see y'all next time bye bye